Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the second video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we covered Evaluate, Bag, Unpack. In today's session, we'll discuss parse JSON, two dynamic, and indexing arrays as we continue to parse dynamic objects. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. We started the JSON parsing series in the last session by taking all keys out of a dynamic JSON and placing them in their own fields using Evaluate, Bag, and Pack. In today's session, we'll show how to use parse JSON, how to cast to a dynamic data type, then extract or project individual keys of value. Sometimes you have a JSON object which has key value pairs and curly braces, and it's stored as a string data type. To leverage many of the useful parsing functions in KQL, the first step is to cast the JSON to a dynamic data type. We can do this by either using parse JSON or to dynamic. Both serve the same general function in preparing the objects for parsing or manipulating as a dynamic data type. In this example, we have two fields that contain JSON objects. As we look at the schema, we see that the status field is set as a dynamic data type, and the device details field is set as a string data type. In this example, we want to take a single key from inside the status JSON and make it into its own field. Remember, if we want to create a new field in the table that doesn't already exist, we can use extend. In this case, let's extend the error code key and make it its own field. This will create a new field called error. When we define what the new field will contain, we can reference the status field first. Use a period, then reference the key inside of the JSON that we want to parse into the new field. When we execute this query, we see that the newly created error field contains the error code. We see the status field containing the original dynamic JSON is still present. And when we look inside of the JSON objects in each record, we can see the error code key value pairs match the new error code field. When we examine the schema, we see that the original status and device detail fields haven't changed, and the newly created error field is set to a dynamic data type. Remember in the last session, when we used evaluate bag unpack, the items kept their original data types when taken out of the bag. But using this method of casting from a string to a dynamic data type, the data type of each key value pairs becomes dynamic. If we wanted to summarize or use distinct, we would have to cast to a different data type. In this example, if we want to cast to an integer, we could do it like this. If you remember, the device detail field is in a string data type. Let's see what happens when we try to pick a key to extend. Let's choose the first key of device ID. We get an error. It fails because the JSON object is in a string data type, and it must be set to a dynamic type to use this type of parsing syntax. In this case, we can use parse JSON or to dynamic to cast to a dynamic data type. We'll create a new field called dynamic device detail. When we run the query, we can see it duplicates the device detail field. But when we check the schema, we can see that the parse JSON function simply changed the data type of the same JSON object from string to dynamic, unlocking the dynamic syntax for us to use. If we go back, we can also use to dynamic to do the same thing. Parse JSON and to dynamic are synonymous in the same way that sort by and order by are synonymous. Now that we have the device detail field in a dynamic data type, we can easily take one of the keys and make it into its own field. We can see that most of the fields are empty and only a few have PII removed as values. If we wanted to now parse the second key of operating system, we can use the same method. When we run the query, we can see the operating system field is parsed. Now that the parsing is complete, we can project only the parsed out fields, if we choose to, to clean up the output. In the last examples, we used extend to create a new field. 
let's go back to our original two JSON objects and use an alternate approach using project. Remember the status field is already set to a dynamic data type. In this example, we want to project our two main JSON objects. Plus we want to project the error code key as a new field. This worked in the same way that extend created a new field, except we accomplished the same thing using project alone. You can see that by casting to a dynamic data type in KQL, you can easily parse and manipulate JSON objects using either bag unpack, extend, or project, depending on your preference or your use case. We also see that when we extend or project, we may need to cast the newly created fields to a data type that we can better manipulate later in the query as we cast back to something other than dynamic, such as a string or integer. If you find a JSON object and you want to parse it, you can always write and test your query to make sure it works. And if you receive an error stating the data type is not dynamic, you can quickly cast it using parse JSON or to dynamic, then continue on. We also want to show some use cases where you may receive an error trying to parse a JSON. In this example, we've projected the status field in authentication details field from the sign-in logs table. When we look at the schema, we see the status field that was used in our previous examples is dynamic, and the authentication details field is a string. Using the previous steps, we can try to cast the authentication details field to a dynamic data type using parse JSON. Then try evaluate bag unpack. When we do this, we see that it doesn't unpack any keys into their own fields. When we look closer at each record, we see the curly braces and the key value pairs associated with a JSON. But we also see brackets encasing the JSON in the authentication details field but not in the status field. These brackets provide an additional challenge to navigate when parsing. The brackets identify an array, which is a collection of elements stored together. In previous lessons, we used pack array when creating variables with multiple values. In those use cases, we made our own array. Now we need to find a way to remove objects from the array or otherwise manipulate the array so that we can parse the items inside of it. In this case, the JSON object full of key value pairs surrounded by curly braces is the object inside of the array. It's also possible to have multiple JSON objects inside of a single array. Before we discuss how to parse these, we want to cover the topic of indexing. In this simple example, we have an array with three elements in it. In KQL, the first element in the array is considered at index position zero. In this case, it's the string test. The number 52 is considered at index one, and the last element of desktop one, two, three, four is at index position two. When we represent these index values in the query, we use brackets. If we wanted to reference the second element of the array, we can use the number one surrounded by brackets, which in this example represents the number 52. This base knowledge of indexing will help us in our next lesson, where we show several ways to effectively parse the targeted resource field. Keep in mind that some languages start their first element at index position one, and other languages start at zero. In the Kusto query language, the first element of an array starts at position zero. For homework, use aka.ms slash LADemo. If you need instructions on how to access this free data set, refer to session seven of the beginner series. Use the sign in logs table and status field to parse a total of three independent key value pairs as a final output. Use the extend method on two of the three keys in the JSON to make new fields. Use the project method on the third key. In the final output, only project the three extracted keys in their own fields. Place your query in the comments section to learn with and help others. That's all for today's session on parse JSON, to dynamic, and indexing. In the next session, we'll learn how to parse JSONs inside of an array and discuss how to parse JSONs that are nested.
If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.